Hi, I'm Jessica and welcome to The Resourceful Teacher. Today I'm going to show you how to easily create your Teachers Pay Teachers store logo in under 20 minutes. Yep, under 20 minutes. I even set a timer. So load up PowerPoint and let's do this. This is video two of my Simplify TPT series designed to show you the quick and easy process of adding a product on TPT from start to finish. So I have a lot of teacher friends just like you who have a TPT store, they have content already created for their classroom, but that content is just sitting on their computers, not making them any money, or most importantly, not helping any other teachers out there who could be using that resource. So I'm here to help you get over anything that may be standing in the way of your successful Teachers Pay Teacher store. Now I know that today's topic isn't really about adding a product on TPT, but one of the most common things I hear my teacher friends tell me is how they don't have a store logo or they don't like the one that they have. And it's because they don't like their store logo, that's been getting in the way of them not getting any products up. Well, hopefully after today's video, that's no longer going to be an excuse. Before we get into that, we need to go over three very important tips to remember throughout the logo design process. Just as in creating a store name, you should also design a logo that best reflects your brand. Think colors, fonts, and images that reflect you and your store name. Your logo is a key piece of your identity as a brand and helps build loyalty between you and your buyers. It's okay to be inspired by other people's creations. However, your design should be original and unique to you. If you're using fonts and images from Teachers Pay Teachers or any other website, make sure to read the terms of use before purchasing. Many authors often restrict how you can use their artwork or they require you to pay an additional licensing fee for commercial use. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. I'll be creating a logo in real time for the fake Teachers Pay Teacher store I set up called The Project Based Teacher in my last video. Now, because I've been creating content for a while, I have tons of fonts to choose from. I mean, tons. You guys, fonts and images are going to be the best investment you can make for your store. Trust me. If you don't have any cute fonts you like, you can find a huge assortment on Teachers Pay Teachers. As I mentioned earlier, before purchasing any clip art or fonts, it's important to make sure you read the terms of use as many sellers often have limitations on how their work can be used. Here's a sample of one of my favorite typeface designers, or as I like to call them, fontists. This is Caitlin Albani. Notice on her terms of use, she lists commercial use, acceptable, using the fonts to create logos and branding elements. Another thing to look for is the author's requirements on crediting their work in the form of a link or a mention. Keep in mind, if you used their font or images in your logo, you would be obligated to mention the author every place you display your logo. There's one more thing I want to mention before we get into designing the logo. I made a mistake back with my logo back when I first started my store by not thinking long term. I used a stock graphic and modified it to suit the needs of my brand. This wasn't a problem until a few years later when I learned that other people were copying my exact logo and using it for themselves. That's when I started thinking of trademarking my logo, but I had a problem. I wasn't able to trademark my logo because the stock graphic I used in my logo was available to anyone who wanted to purchase it. Here, let me show you what I mean. This is my old logo. Cute, right? I purchased this image of the teacher here from a website that anyone can purchase images from. So that means I couldn't trademark it in my logo since other people have most likely purchased it and used it elsewhere. I couldn't claim it as my own just because I slapped some cute font on it. Friends, don't make the same mistake I did. 
Trademarking your brand may not be something you're interested in doing right away since it is a little pricey, but most likely your store is going to become successful and you'll want to consider filing a trademark with the United States Patent Office for your logo. Enough with all the legal stuff, let's get designing. So I've opened up a PowerPoint presentation here. And the first thing I want to do is change the dimensions because right now it's on presentation mode and I want it to be a square picture. So I'll click here on design and then slide size, custom slide size. And then I want the dimensions to be, I like doing 12 by 12 just to have kind of a larger picture. And then click maximize. All right, we wanna get rid of this here. We don't need title or subtitle. Okay, I'm officially designing, so I will start the clock. I'll click here now on insert text box and type in the project-based teacher. See, I want to make this a little bit bigger so I can see how it's going to fit on my page here. So yeah, center it a little bit more here. Okay, that looks good. So I want to look here for a font that is going to be kind of a larger font. I want the font to stand out because the logo is usually pretty small. That one there, that's a little too hard to read. That one maybe. Ooh, I like that one. That's really cute. Let's see what I could do with this here. I'm just going to copy and paste the same text. Kind of move it over here so I can see what I'm working with. Now I like the look of having a mixture of like uppercase and lowercase letters in the words. So let's try doing project based in all caps. That looks nice. All right. This a little bit bigger. That looks good. I like that. All right, the spacing on here between the project based and teacher is kind of off. So I'm going to erase the and teacher. Kind of re center this a little bit here. And I'll figure out how I want the and teacher to go above and below. There we go. Centered. And I like to utilize kind of this space over here as I'm planning out what I want the logo to look like. So I have the and teacher. If I just take this text box, copy it, paste it, move it kind of down out of the way, that saves the font and the font size and just copies it. So we have teacher, we have the, there we go. Now I can kind of manipulate these words a little bit easier. Let's drag the back here. Let's see if it looks, looks kind of cute. Position there. Let's try bit bigger here we need to see this a little bit bigger we did 120 before let's try that here here we go it's better okay let's try lowercase that's cute all right so let's drag teacher we'll move this do i like it centered maybe about Hmm, maybe. Let's see what this looks like with a lowercase t. That's kind of cute. Now, 
let's maybe try taking this font and making it like a thinner, maybe a cursive-y type font to kind of break it up a little bit. Let's see. Going to some of my fontists that I use often, my go-to. It's cute. That's kind of cute. I like the look of that. That looks nice. Let's see what we can do with this. Move it a little bit there. Kind of finding some gaps between project and base to see where this would line up. And maybe let's make it a little bit bigger. That looks nice. Move this right about there. That looks, I like the placement of that. That looks better. I like that. Let's fix the placement a little bit closer here. See what that looks like. Maybe, there we go. Nice, okay. Teacher's a little bit hard to read here with all the black font going on. So let's change it to a different color and see what that looks like. We'll go here and more colors. Let's kind of move this over so I can see. Make this a little bit larger. Now when you're choosing the colors on your logo, you really want to be thinking about your branding. You want to think through colors that you kind of naturally gravitate towards. I'm going to go with like a tealish green color here see what that looks like mm, let's try no that doesn't look right on my resourceful teacher logo and in my brand i like a lot of the dusty pink rose gold colors but i really like a tealish green look for this one Now seeing this kind of all laid out, I think I need to make a couple adjustments here. Let's maybe make this a little bit bigger. Let's see what this looks like here. Move that around there. Let's try here. pretty simple right now we kind of have right here some dead space and some more over here so I should look for some doodle fonts you can find these on teachers pay teachers and they're just like the dingbat fonts except there's cute clip art type pictures so I'm going to type in the alphabet. I'll do it here in uppercase and in lowercase letters. That way as I'm scrolling through my doodle fonts, I can see what each letter would look like. Let's see, copy. Paste. I want to make this one all uppercase. There we go, uppercase. Now, make it a little bit bigger. I have a couple of doodle fonts to choose from. Let's see. I have. This one here. I 
And again, I'm thinking about my brand. So what doodles or pictures are going to represent a project-based teacher? This is a little bit hard to see. Let me make this a little bit bigger here so we can see these pictures and see if they're gonna work. Yeah, I'm seeing some images here that, yeah, putting that right there, putting some down there. Yeah, this might, this might work. I'm seeing a lot of images that would go with project-based teaching, a project-based teacher. Let's move this over here. So it looks like the clip art is the same uppercase and lowercase. So let's just get rid of this. We don't need this here. All right, and looking at all these doodles, I'm going to get rid of the ones that don't align with my brand, project-based teacher. All right. No. Some of these are close, but I'll keep just the ones that fit or are associated the most with the project-based teacher, project-based. There we go. So let's insert a new text box here. So as I'm choosing which doodles I want to use, I need to think what's going to look aesthetically pleasing. What angles are these images pointed in and how can I change that up? Let's see, that's kind of small. Let's make this bigger. How can I change the direction of the images to look pleasing to the eye? There we go. Cute, okay, I like the paintbrush. Let's go over here. I like that this one's pointed kind of in an upward direction. Let's see what that one looks like here. I'm just copying, pasting it over here. That looks good. Let's choose kind of a square, square image. Now it's also kind of tilted a little bit back towards the left. Let's try something kind of more rounded. See if I like the look of that over here. Mm, kind of looks like the A is on fire a little bit or something. Let's see, try something else. Let's try, that's good. Thinner at the top, larger on the bottom. I like that, the beaker. And let's try. Let's put some scissors in here. I'm thinking scissors project. Kind of moved below there. I'll fix that in just a second. I think we need some glue on here too. Scissors, glue. there. Now let's make this a little bit wider so it all fits. There, I like the look of that. Those images look cute. All together, I like the spacing. I like the angles next to each other. All right, let's see the project a little bit over here more. There we go. Okay, let's do the same thing again on the bottom. Insert a text box. Let's see the rest of the images that I want. Let's make this a little bit bigger here first. There we go. Let's do, do that one. When looking at these doodles at the bottom, we still want to keep in mind the angles, the direction that the objects are pointed in. Make sure those are going to vary from image to image. That looks good there. That one pointed up. That's good. Going in that direction. I like that together. Let's do let's see the pencil down here. I like the look of that pointed that direction. Let's 
go back and use this one. Let's see how this one looks down here at the bottom. Yeah, I like that. I like that better than when we had it up on top. Come on, let's do one more over here. Like the light bulb. Yeah, I like that shape. All right, let's make this a little bit larger so they all fit. Move this over. I like the images, but they seem like they're a little bit too big. So, so let's actually make, move these out of the way. Let's make our font here. Project base, let's make that a little bit larger because we have some room with that. So, select all, there we go. Let's widen this out a little bit. Here we go. Gonna recenter it here. Here. Gonna move this. Over. Just clean this up a bit. There we go. And reposition. about there. There we go. Move our doodles back in place. There we go. Our doodles are still kind of large, so let's go ahead and make them a little bit smaller. I kind of want that pencil or the uh, the crayon to be lined up as much with that letter P in project base as possible and this to be the same size as the one we did down below. Whoops. Undo. Actually, I think I like it a little bit bigger on the top to kind of fill up that whole space there. Yeah, I like the look of that. Looks really good. Kind of plain though, so I wonder what it would look like if we took the and project based and did a different color. Whoa, no, I don't like that. <laughs> that looks kind of like the gray there. That looks nice. Breaks up the dark black of the images and the lettering. Yeah, that looks good. Teacher is kind of a little bit, a little bit too light. Let's darken that up just a little bit to make that really pop. There, done. Stop the clock. And super important is to save your work. So we'll click File, Save As. Oops. Save it to my desktop here. Let's call this DPT. I want to save it as a PowerPoint presentation first. That way I can go back and modify it and change it in the future if I need to. But now I'm going to save it again. So file and save as. Save a copy. And this time I want this drop down menu. I'm going to choose to save it as a PNG file. Saving it as a PNG file is going to be a better quality photo. Click save. This little thing pops up. I click just this one slide, not all of the slides. And let's quickly take a look at the PNG file we created on our desktop right here. There it is. There's the logo we made.
that's it. And you too can design your store logo in as little as 20 minutes. Please make sure to like this video and if you want to see more of my Simplify TPT series, follow me by clicking the subscribe link below.